the realm of 20,000 pound, high flying, car crushing, 1500 horsepower monster trucks, one icon stands above all others Bigfoot. It has to be strong to stand up to abuse like this. Well, a monster truck's strength is, to me, the ability to have that truck last through a race and through the exhibitions and drive away after the show's over in one piece. Bigfoot has done more than just survive. In its various incarnations, it has dominated the sport of monster trucks. It's been taller and heavier, 15 and a half feet and 28,000 pounds. It's jumped higher, 24 feet. It's performed the longest recorded wheelie, 217 feet. It's won 20 championships. And it set the record for both speed and length of jump when it vaulted a 727 airliner in 1999 at 69 miles per hour and 202 feet. This monster's strength has evolved. When you talk about Bigfoot, you're really talking about 15 generations of trucks operating under that banner, all designed and built by Bob Chandler, who created the first monster truck back in 1975. I didn't sit in the back of my mind and say, I want to build a monster truck. It's just something that happened over a two or three year period. Bob operated a four x four garage just outside St. Louis, Missouri. He used his own truck as a showcase for equipment he wanted to sell. This is Bigfoot number one. This was my uh, truck I bought new, 1974 F-250 Ford. Drove it back to my garage and started changing things on it. Uh, probably the first truck that had this big tire on, this Terra tire on it. Big tires called for a stronger axle. A stronger axle called for a bigger engine. The added weight called for a stronger frame and suspension. So it was a vicious cycle till it got to the point where I run these 66 inch tall tires. My general manager, Ron Magruder, started calling me Bigfoot because I couldn't keep my foot out of the throttle. And I liked the name, so I stuck it on the side of the truck. Bigfoot was so much stronger than its 4x4 competitors that it soon had many imitators, which ultimately led to monster trucking becoming a genuine motorsport. Even drivers that race against Bigfoot recognize Chandler's contributions. Bob Chandler pretty much started it all. I mean, if Chandler didn't uh, crush that first car, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you guys right now. Without him, I wouldn't have a job, you know, and I've looked up to him for a lot of years. Anytime we race the, the Bigfoot team, that's, that's our big competition. These skilled drivers race these giants over jumps at speeds approaching 70 miles per hour and perform radical freestyle exhibitions to test the vehicle's structural limits. To make it strong, the frame has to be strong, the axles have to be strong, the engine, the transmission, the whole vehicle has to be strong. My concern right now is frames because we're having a lot of frame fatigue problems over the years. So I'm designing a new frame now. Bob uses carefully arranged steel tubing to make Bigfoot's frame. It's definitely the geometry that makes it, makes it stronger, not the, not the amount of tubes you put in it. Bob designs his trucks using AutoCAD and the latest finite element analysis program to help him distribute stress points evenly throughout the vehicle. What we're looking at is a new drawing that we're making that I'm working on for our, for our Bigfoot. And if you can see here, it starts out with just a basic frame rail. And then we add the cage driver, subframe, and it's just basically putting pieces together and I'm configuring them so the truck's going to be stronger overall. Bob brings his designs to life in his 24,000 square foot garage in Hazelwood, Missouri. This is one of the current chassis we use right now, chassis kind of in construction. You can see this. This is the main frame right, right here. We run a nitrogen gas shock, which is so much stronger than our leaf springs. It doesn't appear to be the stronger, but it absorbs some much more energy. It cushions the ride for the, for the drivers. These shocks allow 25 to 30 inches of suspension travel to help absorb the impact of launching 20,000 pounds of truck 20 feet in the air. Okay, this is the driver's compartment. And you see there's a lot of Lexan in here, so the driver can see. He sets so high, so he needs good visibility. So he can see out the back, he can see out the front, he can see out underneath the truck when he's sitting in the seat. Visibility through the truck's floor comes in handy when popping wheelies the length of a stadium. 
These are the axles. They're made in Germany. ZF axles is what they're called. And what makes them so strong is the planetary is right here at the wheel hub. So it transfers all the power going to it is, is reduced right here. On early monster trucks, as on most vehicles, gear reduction, the transfer of energy from the drive shaft to the axle, occurred in the transmission and the transfer case, which added great weight and stress to the vehicle's rear axle. But a planetary gear set can be mounted right at the hub of the axle. A planetary, often used in heavy equipment, is a gear set in which all of the gears are grouped around each other on a single plane, like the planets around the sun. The gear in the center is called the sun gear. It meshes with the gears that surround it, called planet gears, which are attached to the wheels, causing them to turn. This enables Bigfoot to run on giant 66-inch tires with a small, relatively light axle. The strength is put all the way at the wheel rather than through the whole drivetrain. That really worked well. That's the only that, that probably saved our industry. The use of planetaries was just one of many innovations that Bob introduced to the sport. Lightening the truck's tire weight was another breakthrough. Bob and his team cut excess bulk rubber off the tire and customized the tread. It's been said that taking 10 pounds of weight off the tire is like taking 100 pounds off the car. And we take as much as 400 pounds off the tire, so that just makes our truck faster because it spins the tires quicker. When its tires spin, Bigfoot gets to show off its real strength. Whether it's the power of its acceleration, the sturdiness of its axles, or the ruggedness of its frame, Bigfoot's ability to withstand punishment also plays a role in the safety of its drivers. We hit a rollover where I actually rolled one at, at 60 or 65 mile an hour at the end of a racetrack, and the only thing that was left bolted on the truck body-wise was the cab, and I mean, it was destroyed. The roll cage held up. Bob Chandler builds his trucks with a safety factor of 20, meaning that if a part is expected to break at a certain pressure, he builds it 20 times that strength. He plans for his next Bigfoot model to be even stronger. Now I've got to rotate this thing over and actually land it on its roof and put pressure from the top and see how strong it will be in a rollover. I've got to go through probably 100 different configurations before I can see if this is going to be strong enough. Chandler learns as much from his failures as he does from his victories. And the evolution of Bigfoot seems poised to continue. 30 years and 15 generations of design have raised Bigfoot to the top of the heap of monster trucks. Raising a 650-ton mega yacht, however, requires the power of the world's strongest boat hoist. There is no Bigfoot number 13, since the number was considered unlucky by Team Bigfoot. World's Strongest 2 will return on Modern Marvels. <laughs>